Hi, this is Boy Bit, and you're watching DJSounds.com. My artist name is Boy 8 Bit. Uh, parents call me Dave. Um, I'm known for, well, I don't know really what I'm known for. I just kind of make melodic electronic dance music. I don't know how you specifically categorize it. No, I'm not 8 bit music. Um, it's, I won't say it's the bane of my life, but it's kind of, it does cause a lot of confusion now that 8 bit music is um, popular, that kind of retro Game Boy, Nintendo, Commodore thing. Um, Basically my name comes from the fact that I used to use an Amiga computer and that had 8-bit samples um, and then when I was like 15 I thought this would be quite a cool geeky name um, and also explains the boy bit because I'm blatantly not a boy anymore. Um, so yeah I've kind of, the name has stuck I, regretfully and yeah there's a bit of confusion but what can you do? I just take influence of what I listen to and try and make them into something that I want to play out in a club. Um, probably people would know me, I've done remixes for people like LaRue, Florence and the Machine, uh, I've done a release on um, Diplo's Mad Decent label which is probably my biggest release so far. Um, a track called Baltic Pine which was the essential new tune last year, Pete Tom's uh, show. I actually buy all my music pretty much now. Uh, you're talking about the blogs and I think definitely again about two or three years ago it was a big thing but I think it's definitely died off a bit now and like at the time the big thing about the blogs was that you could get tracks up front um, which was good um, but after a while everyone started playing the same records and then like the artists themselves started putting things out earlier, definitely like promoing things earlier and then the blogs kind of didn't have that kind of upfront thing so then it became more like home producers or blog house kind of stuff and the quality kind of dropped off so I'm finding it increasingly difficult to find stuff on blogs that I, that I actually enjoy but there's definitely stuff there because labels in particular will push tracks onto blogs and things like that but definitely now I'm buying a lot of my music off the internet from various places uh, and most of the stuff I play out is either stuff I've made or stuff I've bought but yeah definitely less blog stuff than there was a couple of years ago. For getting your music heard I would say the best way to do it now um, probably is just to send your music to people direct like you've got things like SoundCloud where basically someone is sent a link and they can or it will be embedded somewhere and you can listen to it there so they don't have to download an mp3 or anything like that and obviously things like MySpace as well is still good for that because you can go to a site and you're instantly presented with um, the music there. The blog route it's probably good if you can get on the right ones but I think probably the uptake would be a lot slower because people have to go through it and then there's word of mouth mainly because there just is so much stuff now on blogs um, so I would say probably hit up your favorite producers or DJs or maybe not the top ones but the ones a bit lower down and then once you get a following there it soon spreads through people because people know people and that's the way I know that tracks spread now is through that people will pick up these tracks and just word of mouth will pass it around I kind of try and keep it fresh with my own stuff because basically for my own sanity I can't play my same tracks for three years in a row so I kind of anything new I kind of try and push that and if I need to play them I'll play some of the older stuff but I'm always trying to push newer stuff onto people I, I kind of I know there's two ways of approaching DJ where you're either playing for the crowd or you can play for yourself and I like to try and push more towards pushing new stuff and therefore playing for myself a bit because there's just too many people playing the same records so you've kind of got to be fresh so yeah I do edits I try new tracks out edit them into little three minute things and try them out but yeah it's a mixture of my own stuff and other people's stuff but I really enjoy the music I buy so I try and play quite a lot of other stuff as well. The kind of with the equipment you get now when you DJ there's much more options to do stuff than when you were just playing like a, a 12 inch record that unless you uh, you had superhuman skills you had to just literally play it from beginning to end. Um, so yeah you've got obviously your mixer has effects that you can kind of do stuff you can basically use the effects to recreate more like 
rather than having like in your build in your track having it filter and then delay and stuff like that maybe producers are now leaving the, the drops more straight so that you can do all of that on the mixer so you can like glitch it or you can reverb filter it add delays anything like that and then obviously with the combination of being able to cue it you can jump about in the track so i know personally when i've made tracks i've been thinking like do i actually need to add all this like this is something i could be doing and adding to my performance element so some there's definitely tracks i've made where i've held back on definitely like the builds and stuff because I want to leave it for people so that they can do it for themselves and use the kit that they've got to make their own like build-ups and transitions. The USB thing is obviously very very appealing because you can walk around with if you're brave one or if you're not so brave two backups but I'm always scared that then you're relying on two things or one and if that was to go wrong then pretty much you're set could be over so but I think for me I will definitely be taking CDs but I want to move into the USB so I will prepare stuff on USB and then take backup CDs in case the worst should happen but it's definitely something that would interest me because rather than having to burn CDs and label them and then dropping CDs and scratching them or anything like that or playing them and they mess up it won't be a problem and obviously that would be the perfect solution. Annie Mac, I've known Annie for a long time, well not a long time but in terms of my career I've known her for pretty much all of it from for about five or six years now. Um, she's played my records on Radio 1 which what can you say that's like one of the biggest audiences you can get so she supported a lot of my stuff. Um, She's like last year. She definitely pushed like the Florence and the Machine and the Larue. She had the first like play of Larue. Uh, well, she was the first to play it. So definitely, she's definitely been a big, big help uh, to me. And we've kind of DJed together. Like we kind of came at the same time when we were DJing, started getting busy. So yeah, definitely someone who's helped a lot. I think definitely about two, three years ago, there was a definitely like. A, a strong UK scene but again it's kind of segregated again and back then you had people like the Switch and Cinder and the dub sided thing, Herve and that kind of sound got big that kind of it was house music but it was influenced by things like Baltimore Club and like Brazilian music um, but I think that's kind of segregated again and everyone's kind of gone off and doing their own thing like there's now the UK funky thing that a lot of people are doing uh, dubstep was obviously come into prominence over the last three years so a lot of people are doing that so I don't really tie myself into anything UK but I've definitely come from that group of like UK like house music producers that kind of were around three years ago and have now segregated. I was at a festival called Park Life in Manchester last week and I met with um, Mixhell uh, from Brazil one of them being Igor Cavalera from Sepultura if anyone knows them, they're like a Brazilian heavy thrash, whatever you want to call it, metal band. And we discuss the possibility of working on something. I'm, obviously I'm quite into my metal music, so we've discussed the possibility of doing a, a death slash black metal hybrid. He does the, he does, he does the drums. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do something like that. It would just be something fresh for me and it's something obviously that I'm into, so. Who, who knows, maybe maybe next year there'll be this duo going around the world playing hybrid death black metal.